Are you good, Sue? Are we are we recording already? Yes. Oh, thank you very much. So thank you very much for starting. Uh, we're about to start our Easter Sunday um, meeting, and for that, we're gonna have Isabella say a few words, a prayer for us to get us started. so much for the opportunity to be here among friends among our spiritual friends too thank you for our lives our families and today this special day we are so grateful for your presence in our lives May we celebrate being here, being alive, having this opportunity to do better, to be better every day. We thank you so much for all the blessings. We also thank you for the challenges because they make us grow. And now, we humbly ask permission to start this meeting full of love and enlightenment. Thank you very much, Isabella. It's the best opening prayer I've seen. Summarize the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole idea, actually. If we just get the opening prayer going, we're good. <laughs> the rest is just like to add a little bit of a... We're going to talk about... We're going to talk about Jesus today. So that's, um, to me, the difficult topic because... Uh, what I was thinking to do... Uh, first thing, let me explain because that volley here, some people went online, man. This was... Uh, uh, I was in doubt if I should put this... <laughs> this <laughs> this uh, uh, T-shirt today, but we visit, we visit the park. And I don't know about you, but I had... Um, preconceived idea that the desert would be a very harsh environment and uh, not spiritually uh, positive and I was so surprised I felt so peaceful right is it so peaceful to, uh, especially at night when it gets silence um, hey, amazing the silence you get and the energy was so good and it was like oh I was laughing in the face I was like my goodness this is an amazing place to be uh, a very spirit I, I felt the spiritual vibration of the place to be tremendous Recommended, not during the day or summer summertime stuff, the, the physical side, because you have to endure the temperature. But it's an amazing place to be. That's why actually I decided, okay, let me get the, so I'll pay the price for being so judgmental <laughs> and so wrong about a place. So it was amazing, actually. Very good. But we're going to talk, uh, talk about Jesus. But, okay, well, well my, the, the ideas that came to my mind is to just um, uh, talk to you about Jesus, but in a way that might not be familiar or the way... We're going to approach the understanding of Jesus through the spiritist lens that might be unusual for most people. Might be unusual. Might be. Might be. Or not. Or not. Right? So, we're going to talk about him in a different way. And if you are in the Western world, right, uh, Jesus uh, is pretty much you know, the most um, uh, known character in our history, right? Today's what? Today's the 17th, right? 17th of April, 2022 of the day <laughs> in theory we believe historically jesus was born and so it's a it's a it's a very powerful figure in the history of humanity the historical jesus right there's the christian church a religion that has evolved around this his teachings right and there's a lot of information a lot of perspectives there's the bible and there's other religions as well that even include i mean even like islam include, include jesus as well that's not the approach and uh, i'm gonna take today and um I'm going to talk about the practical Jesus, right? I'm going to talk about the, 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 how to understand him as, um, as, as what he did for our, for our community, in a sense. And for that, in order to understand Jesus, there's one step, there's one thing that we have to do, is understanding a piece of ourselves too, right? What is a human being? 
being, or, or without at least uh, having a, a slighter different approach than it is the norm today of what is a human being, I personally think it's impossible to unlock the meaning of what Jesus did to us or does to us, right? And this is, this is where there's a step you have to take with me. If you don't take that step, it's fine, but then everything else becomes sort of um, empty or become kind of difficult to even entertain. There's one major, major, major step, which is what are human beings? What, what are we? And to us, for us to understand this is that there's an ancient understanding about human beings being souls, spirits, or something that transcends the biology. I think we're close. Uh, I might be wrong, but I think we're close to get to that in science. I think we're going to be uh, it's just gonna, a question of time until science uh, uncovers this other side of human beings, which is the, the this element that we don't have a name yet, maybe. We're using the ancient names like we use here right now, the spirit. But fundamentally what it is, that human beings, for us, for our from the main and uh, mainstream understanding, uh, scientific understanding, are fundamentally composed of an element that's not bound to the body. It's not bound to the biology. Interact with it is very important, very connected to it, but it's not it. Historically, is an understanding of the soul, right, or the spirit, whatever, depending on, 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 your, your, on your background, depending on what you went through, what you, the name you give. That's it. For us, that's where we're going to go with, right? And this is, it was the norm, by the way. This is nowadays uh, something that, because we don't understand it through the scientific, scientific tools. If you go back in time, was, I, I used to I like to talk about that. If you think about, I mean, in terms of all the, uh, the his, historical uh, constructions we have in the world, one of them, I think, that stop with your mind, if you think about it, is the pyramids, right? I mean, we all know about the, Egypt, the pyramids of Egypt that were built like 3,000 years ago, and uh, I have never been there, but all I know about the pyramids is that they're amazing engineering constructions that took probably uh, decades to be, made, be, be built by the whole country, right? And what was that? Is the vehicle where the leader, the pharaoh, would transcend to a new life. That's the whole thing. It was like a tomb, right? It's where the whole construction was based on the transition of the leader of that society when he or she, or he actually, of course, I don't think she was back then big, I don't think women could be, could be women, I'm not sure. But then uh, uh, that's the vehicle of transition. So to, the whole society had ingrained that, con that, con that understanding of uh, afterlife. In most societies of antiquity, if you go back in time, they have this notion, they have the burial, the transition to the new world, to the world nobody understood. The problem is we abuse that in religion to start using that thing in a way that kind of led us to complicated historical facts that we're not going to go into today, right? But then today we, we face that uh, because we don't have a clear understanding yet of that. Um, the mainstream is like we're not because we understand the biology pretty well or we have a lot of good understanding about biology and we don't understand this energetic part yet. So this is kind of not the mainstream understanding of our society today, which is new in terms of human history, new stage that we'll see is hard to when you're in the middle of the fight uh, to classify things, right? We're probably going to look back 100 years, 200 years from now, and uh, this might well be the Dark Ages. <laughs> this might well be the Dark Ages. When you look back in time, 200 years from now, 300 years from now, the same way we look to the Middle Ages and the Dark Ages today and the Illuminism of science, we might look back and say, oh my goodness, this world were the Dark Ages in a, in a way. But that's for another day, for another discussion. But today we're going to work with that and say, Take, go in this voyage with me, that human beings are not just the flesh, and they have a soul or a, a spirit that transcends the body, and more important than anything else, we're alive before we were, are born, before our body was born. So which means, that's a huge step that we are not this life. And then when you look at me right here, here right now, and you look at my face and my body, the way I look, this is not the way I am. This is my current body. This is my expression. This is how I'm experiencing this life here. But maybe a thousand years ago, I was in another body, in another, facing another life. Hopefully, <laughs> I doubt. I doubt it though. Uh, uh, going through all the, the the experiences, and this is the same for you.
right? What you are, when you look in the mirror right now, you're looking a version of you, the best version of you today. But who knows how many experiences we had before and how many experiences we're going to have in the future. So we are constructions. We are beings that are being constructed through an immense, very long time. We don't know how long, but we are just voyaging. we know that it took about a billion years, right, give or take, for bacteria to become us, right, give or take. We don't know exactly when bacteria start, you know, I, I guess uh, we don't have a consensus about when bacteria start populating the earth, right, but we know that it was only bacteria about a billion years ago. That was all you had, right, and it took about a billion years to us here, human beings, intelligent, brains, right, capable of uh, awareness, right, to develop in our planet, right. So how long it took for us to, you know, how many lives we may have had? We don't know, right? But we know where we are now. This, you, me, and every single human being alive on Earth right now is the work of evolution of this process that took us here, right? That's it. And what we do today is the best we can ever do. This is one of the teachings of the, we always evolve, so which means what you're seeing right now is the best and easy ever. And I know that's sad sometimes, but this is it. We are evolving. This is the best us. Most capable, more uh, knowledgeable individual you have ever been. All the experiences that you had in the past serve you right now in your background, give you the strength. But you are now that, the product. And the future you will be the product of your experiences. Right? That's amazing, right? But... It gives us a very powerful understanding of ourselves. This is the best us, right? And how quick things are going. I was thinking about making a, a comparison, like for instance, to computers, right? Uh, how how much uh, we evolve in so short time. And I, I was I was I, I still talk to my kids, and like you can see, computers are in their hands. Uh, computers are not part of life. And I I, rem I grew up. I was the first one in my family to deal with computers, right? And uh, they were not around the 50s and 60s, right? Now, uh, uh, now I remember the, having discussions with my parents in, in the 80s and 90s about what computers are good for, right? Well, it's not useful for anything, right? And now we have, see what we develop as society, how much we have constructed and built around us. We even have now the dawn of the virtual worlds. Now it's a big thing, and I think it's going to be a big in the next uh, decade or so, we're going to have virtual worlds that are going to play an important role in our society. I don't know where the way they're going to go, right? But we're going to have a, bunch, a, a big part of our lives in this virtual reality, right? And those are things that we're building it. So see how we build stuff? And that's the outcome of our work. Many of us are going to be working in technology. Many of us will be working uh, in manifesting those things. But fundamentally, look how we shape our world. Look how us, intelligent beings, how we shape the world that surrounds us. How powerful we are, right? If that's the way the universe is, there's a major click. God is actually the platform you could think God is this thing that we don't understand, but let's see, is intelligence that may created this space that we mold with intelligent beings, mold into what it is. And we're starting to experience that ourselves. We start to be aware of that ourselves in humanity right now on earth. How much we mold, how much we face, how much we shape everything that there is around us. Right? Do you agree with me with that? That's all. So now I think we can grasp that right now, right? How much we have the power to shape and construct the world around us. Let me ask you something. If you extrapolate that, if you go beyond that, where we truly live on Earth? A planet is a piece of rock in the middle of a universe that we don't even know yet the size. We don't even know yet how big, how large this universe is. Now let me ask you, 
Knowing what we know about intelligence and how intelligence molds surroundings, how do you think us, if we don't destroy ourselves, what do you think we are going to be doing as a society 10,000 years from now? What kind of shaping, what kind of molding we're going to be doing? Just bring your mind. We're probably going to start shaping Mars, a different planet, into something completely different in a few more years. Right? We understand the power? So now, let's just for a moment contemplate those that came before us. Is this the first time this is happening? Are we the first society to ever achieve technological level? You could say it is. And some scientists believe right now that we are so unique that we are the first, maybe in the whole universe, society that has achieved technological level. And now we are shaping the world. My challenge to you is that, no. <laughs> that, like we learned, religious people in the, in the Middle Ages believed that the Earth was the center of the universe, right? We believe that. By the way, that was the thing. Earth was in the center. Everything was revolving around the Earth. Universe, all Earth, Earth, Earth. And then science came and said, forget about that. We're not even the center. That's the sun. All the laws of nature uh, put us, uh, you know, everywhere. They, they work everywhere. They're not to just bound to this planet. You're just actually a piece of rock. And now we are full soccer. Now science believe we are the center. We are the only society that has achieved technological development in this whole universe that we don't even know the size. What are the chances that's true? To me, zero. <laughs> zero. But we cannot prove it yet, right? So, well, okay, time will come. Like the same way we believe the Earth was the center. Until Galileo, I mean, all the proofs start showing the gravity and understanding. We are just one evolutionary step as it is all societies have gone through. And I think eventually we're going to find other planets like us. We already know there are many planets like us, like Earth. We can find them already. Although it's very hard because they don't have light. But we find many rock planets like us. We just don't know exactly what it is. But there's probably billions of those. If not, who knows how many. So this is a natural process of our evolution. Right? And this has happened before. will happen again. And maybe one day, one day, you and me and somebody else, maybe, God knows from one time in the future, will be working on that. But then somebody worked before. My proposition to you is that this is not an accident. Earth's not an accident. It's not an accident. If, we're, if you get every single detail about this planet, like if we had four times less water than we have, probably would be no life as we know it, because life, water wouldn't be enough to be actually um, irrigated. It would be much more land, it would be much more deserts, right? And if we had four times more water than we do, probably wouldn't have, have surface, we would have a wet planet, a swamp. If Earth was a little bit further from the sun, it would be too, it would be too cold, mostly ice all the time. If it was too close to the, to the sun, it would be too hot, and it would be too much for the life, life, biological life we have right now. And I'm just saying two things. If Think about how many things have to be in the right place for billions of years to work for the, for the whole ecosystem to develop. And by the way, I, we had another experience this weekend. I'm going to just plug my experience this weekend, which was amazing. I don't know if you ever stand next to a sequoia, to a tree, sequoia tree. I was so amazed to hug. I had to hug one of them. I understand now they say uh, tree ruggers, uh, huggers. I think I am one. Because I, I had to hug the tree. Man. It's, it's such an amazing a tree that's alive for 2,000 years, has been around before Jesus was born. Right? And it's been life from that time and, and it's caring. That to me was an amazing just experience to being close to that being. Right? Those trees that are amazingly, amazing in this evolutionary process that we don't fully understand. And, 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 and that, that to me was so magical. So to me, what I'm, what I'm saying to you is that there's, I, for me it's obvious, but there's a high probability, my suggestion to you is that this is not a mistake. It's not, it's not, it's not, uh, random. We live in a world that has been prepared for us, has been groomed, adjusted, fine-tuned 
to allow us to have the body experience we have right now. But here comes the kicker. Many people do agree with that, and they say it's God that gave us to us that. And it's okay. God gave us that, because God gave us any, everything. My proposal to you is that now that we are more aware, yes, everything has, we, 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 God is everything, is the essence of all the universe. But what I'm telling you right now is that God manifests through intelligence. Everything you do today, or I do today, is a manifestation of God, especially if it's to the good. If it's to the good of our community. I, had to, I did something in the morning, I'm proud, I'm going to just plug it again, another my experiences. Today I was coming back home uh, after going to the grocery store, and there was, you know those cones that they put, there, those, those orange cones to protect the traffic? Uh, they are doing some construction close to our home, my home, and one of the cones were like in the middle of the lane. There's a two-lane, very busy road close to my house, and then it forced the car, you know, if, when you come at high speed, it forced the car to to get into the other line. What happened? If two cars are too close, that will create kind of a tension, right? And I saw that, I closed my house, and I, what do I do? I parked the car in the house and I walked. And I fixed the cone. I just brought the cone to the proper position so the two lanes are properly simple. And I felt so good about that. <laughs> so good I'm sharing to you about that. So in, see how we manifest uh, goodness in our surroundings. So we are the hands of God, the hands of creation. And when we build a better society, we're doing that. We're manifesting, we're gods with a little g, right? We're manifesting God. And to my proposal to you is that we live right now in a planet that has been groomed and manifested by intelligent beings just like us. And the one we are talking about Jesus, from what we believe, is kind of a major response, has a major responsibility in the world we live today. I know we all talk about the cross, the sacrifice, Christianity talks a lot about he dying for our sins, and there's a lot of interpretation about that. That's fine, and that, that in a way it is, because his life in the flesh was supposed to be a model how we should do it. But the real greatness of Jesus for humanity, the real contribution of this being to humanity, we believe is not that. That was an example of life. His really impact on us is that we has what he has done through this immense amount of time, right? Since the creation of this planet, since this planet was conceived, right? To this day, and we think, Respo has, he has a major responsibility of the planet we live on today. Not the whole universe, not the whole thing, no. Just the planet. Just this piece of rock that we enjoy right now, that's our home in this universe. So we believe that he, his intelligence is to blame for the planet we have lived today. So that's why. He has nothing to do with the religion. He has nothing to do with a specific movement. So he, out of compassion and out of love and out of sheer work towards all this time, is kind of uh, responsible for this experience we're having too right now. <coughs> I know, am I, I don't know how you guys take that. This is very uh, powerful in a completely diff different way to approach Jesus. Uh, but I, I, I find it, it's, it's a high probability that this is the case from, uh, there's a high probability that this planet was designed by work, pure work, that way we're going to, you know, work, manifestation of intelligence. And apparently, if you think about his teachings, think about Jesus' teachings, they're exactly in line with a construction of a society that develops and creates um, um, goodness for each other. And that's why the major commandment is love thy neighbor as yourself, right? So if you think about his, his teachings, they connect, they close the loop into two elements, right? The, the, the building of love among all the children, all the, you know, the, the, and the understanding, right? And, uh, and I think that's the, that's the where things are going to tie up.
in our development. So in a sense, we're all, every single one of us, not just from one religion or for another, but every single human being that has been chosen or chose or could come to earth to have part of your spiritual growth here, we're all connected in heart and mind, knowing or unknowingly, to this spirit, to this individual, that's Jesus. So we're part of Jesus' history already because we are on earth because we chose to be in this planet. Or we chose or we were chosen, I don't know. We don't know how this can happen. But we are here now, growing, regardless of your perspective, you're having your experience right now. Even if you don't believe, if you don't know, if you don't care about this thing. But right now, you are part of the Earth family. And the Earth family is connected to Jesus, regardless of who you are or what you believe. That's kind of uh, the way we see this spirit, this individual, right? As you can see, nothing to do with the cross, nothing to do with the suffering, nothing to do with, uh, with that specific vision. It's much bigger than that. It's much bigger than that, right? I hope I brought some thoughts for you to think about that. And uh, I maybe I, uh, I hope to have been... Um, I we shouldn't claim to I, I we shouldn't claim to be uh, I I think we should feed each other with the best of what we have in terms of understanding and as we go as we grow we'll understand we'll have a better understanding of life and uh, taking the most advantage of we can about the things we have been given and the things we are going to build for our future by the way that's what we have in control and with that in mind we're going to transition to our meditation and our passes. Thank you very much, and we'll stop. Thank you very much for everybody that might be watching this. See you soon.